Good evening, everybody. So April is Limb Loss Awareness Month. And uh, in this month, I'm going to try to do a few more videos detailing some of the aspects of being an amputee and answering some of the questions that I have received. Uh, this video, I'm going to show you a little bit about what goes on at the end of the day when it's time to take this bad boy off. So starting off, these are my regular Levi jeans that have been modified with a zipper along the out seam. You can actually now buy, there's clothing companies that will sell modified jeans, or you can find a seamstress or someone who's, who you know who's talented at sewing can do that zipper for you, either on the out seam, sometimes people do it on the inner seam. But it makes it a lot handier, especially in a colder climate, so you don't have to wear shorts in order to get at your leg. You don't have to drop your pants in public anytime you want to access your leg. So this makes it a little bit more discreet and viewer friendly. So, uh, yeah, I am uh, now just over two years as an amputee. I'm still wearing a pin lock socket. And for me, it is my favorite. You'll hear a lot of people say that one system is better than the other. Um, I disagree. I think that each system has its strong points and weak points for me. For simplicity, durability, working in construction, a pin lock socket is where it's at. Not only that, but uh, my limb doesn't really fluctuate much in volume, so I don't have to change my ply socks much throughout the day. Some amputees, some types of amputations, they seem to have a lot more uh, volume changing throughout the day. I'm pretty consistent that way, so for that I'm really lucky. Now. Today I'm wearing only one uh, lightweight or one ply sock over top of my liner. And this is to accommodate for volume changes throughout the day. At this stage, being after uh, being two years post amputation, I typically don't have to change my socks throughout the day. Um, if I'm really active, sometimes I will take off that one ply and I will go to a three ply sock. The three ply usually has a yellow stripe on it, even if they're a different manufacturer. This is a five ply with a green stripe. I have not even worn this yet. Maybe one day as my limb slowly continues to shrink, I'll be wearing a five ply. Now, when you're new, when you're a new amputee, your limb is still swollen and recovering from surgery. It'll shrink a lot when you start wearing your first test socket. At that point, you may be doubling up on socks. You may be wearing two, two five-ply socks, a five and a three. You just wear them over top of each other. So that would be eight-ply. If I was to put the one-ply over top, that would be nine. Typically, when you start doubling up those socks like that, that's an indication that you're getting close for it to be time to be for you to be recast for a new socket. Uh, but like I say, once, once you mature, once your limb matures as, a, as an amputee, you'll find that that, that volume uh, fluctuation stays a lot more consistent. So uh, typically at the end of the day, once my leg comes off, I take off my liner and I hit the shower. The liner, while it's inside out or while it's inverted, I'll wash it with some hot water and some soap and um, I usually pat it dry with a clean towel. Then I will turn it back so it's right side out. And it's kind of easy with a, with a pin lock because they give you these little uh, liner buddies and they just basically lock onto the pin and then you can hang it wherever you want and just keep it nice and clean. So these are the Alps uh, liners and I alternate liners from day to day. So this is my shorter liner. This liner is a little bit older and this one's cut a little bit longer. Both of these have been trimmed from their original length. Um, but between these two liners, there's still about an inch and a half of difference. The reason for that is it prevents me from developing a welt on my upper thigh where the top edge of the liner ends. Um, if that liner ends always in the same spot over time, and it happened to me, I started getting this unsightly red line where this was always touching in the same spot. So having the two liners at different lengths helps alleviate that. So now uh, 
Typically, yeah, when the light comes off, I hit the shower, the leg doesn't go back on for the rest of the evening. Um, if for some reason I just want to take a break from my leg, if it's only for a little while, I won't put uh, a shrinker on. But if I'm going to spend a little bit of time out of my leg, then what I'll do is I'll wipe it down. This is a little bit of uh, alcohol water mix, and I'll just spray it on a light rag, and I'll give my limb just a little bit of a wipe down. Um, sweating was more of an issue when I was uh, when I first was an amputee. Now that my limb has matured, sweat doesn't seem to be as much of a problem inside my liner. But it's still something you got you got to keep an eye on. Um, in really hot weather, if I'm really, really active, yeah, sweat can still build up and cause a few issues. So, uh, when my liner comes off, I'll just take a quick look, make sure I don't have any hot spots or red marks where the socket perhaps is starting to, um, cause irritation on my skin. Make sure I don't have any ingrown hairs, uh, make sure I don't have any blisters or cuts. And I'll make sure that the incision at the bottom is nice and clean. Um, then... So, say if I was to take a shower, when I come out of the shower, I'm all dried off, on goes the shrinker. Shrinker is basically a compression stocking. This is a Juzo shrinker, and it has these little uh, silicone buttons on the inside, and they basically stick to your skin and help hold the shrinker on. Now, the shrinker helps a lot in keeping uh, the volume of your limb consistent prevents that swelling. If if you're sort of sitting on the couch, or even now that now that I'm two years post amp uh, overnight, I don't really have to wear a shrinker anymore. But if I'm up and about and I'm on my crutches, um, yes, I will wear a shrinker. Helps keep that volume down, and it does add a little bit of comfort. That that compression on my residual limb does help a lot with the comfort factor. Now, um, one other thing I just wanted to touch on was uh, amputations for people who have CRPS. Uh, it's still a real crapshoot whether an amputation will work to solve your pain. The majority of people who have amputations due to CRPS, that pain still comes back, spreads upper uh, higher up in their limb or goes into their previously unaffected leg and it just makes life hell for them. I am really, really lucky that I have had no uh, relapses of the CRPS in the two years since my amputation. But there is one thing, and I'm not sure if it's because I had an amputation due to CRPS. I explained in other videos, I don't really have any nerve pain, I don't have any phantom pain, but I do get kind of limb, almost like hypersensitivity. It doesn't make it painful to wear my socket, but in a long day or towards the end of the week, usually Monday starts off fine, but by the time I get to Friday, I really, really hate wearing this thing. It's not that it hurts, but it just, it just feels uncomfortable spending every day trapped in this hard, rigid shell. I don't know if that's just me, but I have heard from other amputees that have had amputations due to CRPS that wearing their prosthesis a lot or for long extended periods of time can cause issues. Um, it's just the nature of the game of being an amp due to CRPS. Now, I'm really lucky because when I'm outside of my leg, I don't feel that limited. I am pretty capable on these things. Don't mind spending an evening on these. Don't mind spending a full day. And I still, at this stage, uh, one day or even sometimes two days a week, I will stay out of my leg completely, stay on my crutches, and just let my limb relax from wearing this thing. So there you have it. Hope that helped you out, uh, answered some questions. And um, being April, I am going to do some more videos soon. So stay tuned for those. All right, guys. Take care.